Welcome to the Big Island of Hawaii and another edition of Random Road Cuts here on the Big Island of Hawaii on the Old Saddle Road, which is nice because it doesn't get used a lot. A quieter road allows us to check out some road cuts here. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey here on the Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, Random Road Cuts is a series where we just stop at an interesting road cut, make observations together, try to put together the geologic story for this location and just learn together. That's sort of the premise here. So here we have this interesting road cut and um, I stopped because I saw, and you might be able to make this out as well, but there's some obvious like tilting or inclined layers that we see here, which is a little different than what you see a lot of the road cuts in Hawaii or lava flows, um, hardened basalt. This looks a little different, so I'm interested to go check this out with you. Just a little bit of regional context here. Uh, there's the summit or near the summit of Mauna Kea. So we're just on the southwest side of Mauna Kea in this kind of grassland area, about 5,000 feet or so above sea level. So we've got one of the main five volcanoes that makes up the Big Island just off to our east. And then if we look past the road cut here, over there in the clouds is Kohala, which is the northernmost and oldest volcano on the Big Island. So we're sort of in this saddle zone between Kohala, Mauna Kea, can't see it, but over these hills here is Mauna Loa, and then back over this way in the clouds is Hualalai. So we're kind of in this region between these four different uh, volcanoes. But let's take a look at this road cut here. You'd think in Hawaii it would all be the same stuff and pretty simple, but <clears throat> this looks a little bit different here. This is uh, not your typical hardened black lava flows. We've got some orange coloration up here, which is very likely the weathering of these basaltic lava flows, which are very iron rich into uh, more iron rich soils. Um, so we've got some soil here uh, but you can see just right below it here, and almost mantling it, I suppose, on my rock hammer here, um, is this orange stuff sort of forms a veneer or a weathered coating over the darker material. Let's go down here where it's a little better exposed. <clears throat> so now we're seeing the, the strong layering here. So when you see layering like that, you might think about tectonic forces taking horizontal layers and tilting them. But remember that we also have environments in which material can come to rest at an angle. And one such environment might be a sand dune. The wind blows the sand over the crest of the dune, dune and it settles on the backside at the angle of repose, maybe 25 to 30 degrees or so. Another environment in which we can get material accumulating at an angle like this would be in a volcanic setting where we have material being blown up, you know, blown out of the vent up into the sky, pyroclastic material or tephra, and then as that stuff falls, it can fall and settle and accumulate at a greater angle than horizontal. So either a possibility may be in play here. Of course, we don't have, you know, the tectonic forces and especially not the time frame here in Hawaii to take horizontal rocks and tilt them. Everything on the Big Island is less than, I think, 700,000 years or so ago. We just so, don't see those compressive and tensional forces, for the most part, to tilt the rocks. But let's go ahead and, and take a look at this material. Um, so we can see it's layered. Uh, we can also see that where it's fresh, it's this gray, color, this sort of dark gray, almost black color. Um, and it's kind of crumbly. You can break it apart with your hand. It's not that strong, but it is consolidated, consolidated together. It's made out of grains of sediment rather than crystals. And so we have some sort of sedimentary product here. Um, and before I got on camera, I thought, well, I won't be able to do this with the camera rolling, but I grabbed a chunk and looked at it with my hand lens. And this is mostly a, a medium to coarse grain sand material, but the particles are pretty angular, mostly basalt 
in composition. Some of the browner ones are more weathered or oxidized pieces of basalt. And so um, we might come up with a couple different stories here because I can think of two stories that might work at this location. We can see that the tilting uh, is down to our left, which is more or less off to the east, or excuse me, west or northwest here on the Big Island. Um, not seeing any other like sedimentary structures we might see in these layered rocks. You know, ripple marks might be something you look for. Um, changes in the grain size does not seem to be part of this here. It looks like it's all the same material in terms of the grain size. Um, and then this just sort of semi-continuous layering. It looks like the thickness of the beds uh, is not perfectly the same, but it's pretty consistent. Anywhere from, you know, uh, less than a centimeter or so, maybe up to a centimeter. Let's go up a little bit higher here on the slope. If we can, there's a nice exposure up here. Yeah, and here you can see some more of the coloration whoa, from uh, where some of the weathering is taking place here. The water's percolating down and starting to oxidize and break this material down into, into soil. So uh, we've made some observations. We've got the grain size. I suppose you could call this, if you needed to throw a rock name at this, I guess we would call it a sandstone based on the grain size. Although again, it's pretty crumbly, uh, pretty easy to break apart with your hand. But I've seen, I've seen less cohesive sandstones in my time, so I feel good about that. Um, but it's totally made out of these volcanic sized particles. And yet when I look at it, I don't really see a lot of crystals in it. So if this was a pyroclastic deposit of ash, uh, stuff being blown out of a volcano, we would expect to find a lot of crystals in there, things that were incorporated in the lava, along with maybe some very glassy pieces. The lava that's getting blown out of the volcano is cooling quite quickly in contact with the atmosphere and you'd get some glassy particles. And when I looked at it with my hand lens, just wasn't seeing that at all. And so the chances of this being a pyroclastic deposit from some explosive eruption seem pretty small. Now we mostly have fairly quiet eruptions here in Hawaii, even over time of lava flows, but there have been explosive eruptions in the past. Uh, 1790, a Kilauea comes to mind. Um, I did a video with the, the footprints in the Ka'u Desert region. So we know that there are explosive events that can happen uh, on Hawaii. So what I think these rocks may be telling us, I think a big clue might be <clears throat> the regional climate, and then also perhaps the proximity to Mauna Kea. So Mauna Kea rises well over 13,000 feet. It's the tallest mountain in Hawaii. Uh, depending on how you gauge mountains, it's actually the tallest mountain on Earth from base to summit, from its bottom at the bottom of the ocean all the way to its summit. And Mauna Kea was glaciated during the last ice age. And so there's evidence up there of glacial striations. There were glacial deposits. They still get snow up there most years. And so the point is, is that you would have had a glaciated region up on Mauna Kea. We are downwind of the trade winds. So the winds that blow in this region, let me come back across the road, um, blow over the top of Mauna Kea and down this way towards the coast here off to our west. And so I think a better interpretation for these cool little tilted sand deposits here is this is an old dune field. I think that the glaciers would have eroded a bunch of material up near the summit of Mauna Kea during the last ice age. As those glaciers then melted, um, the trade winds would have blown that loose material 
up and over Mount Achaia, down into this region here, and then deposited these, these dunes here. And then since that time, you might be asking like, well, where, where are the dunes now? Um, and perhaps it was drier then, and it's a little wetter now because now we have this more grassland type of area here where the, the dunes themselves are actually stabilized by all these grasses and such in here. So it does, um, I guess, beg the question, maybe this is a road cut here, cuts right through a, an ancient dune, an actual sand dune that developed over time. Um, and is now revealed with this road cut, which would I suppose make, and this is all just, you know, interpretations we're making on the fly here. Um, just looking around at the landscape now, because if this is one dune right here, or older dune, then we might expect there to be kind of a lumpy, hilly topography where these other dunes exist. And I think you could convince yourself of that to some degree. There is some irregularity to this landscape here. So pretty cool though. Uh, interesting road cut, something that caught my eye and something I thought we could investigate together. Well, thanks again for joining me on this edition of Random Road Cuts here on the Big Island of Hawaii. Hope you learned something new. I know I sure did. Wasn't expecting something like this here in Hawaii amidst all the lava flows and cinder cones and some of the other typical volcanic features we find here. Wasn't expecting to find tilted rocks, possibly a sand dune deposit, um, and actually consolidated sand material um, that I think might have been windblown from Mount Ikea just to the northeast. But thanks again for your support of the channel. Hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you out there. Take care. <laughs>